Hi everybody, welcome to our video today. Today we're going to share what our top 10 tips are for when you're cruising in Europe. And we've got some little, you know, good ideas along the way that will help your journey be a bit more easier to navigate and comfortable. Hi, we're Andy and Shell from Fairway Cruising. If you're visiting our channel for the first time, welcome. If you're returning, welcome back to our channel. Yeah, our channel's all about tips and tricks as we go cruising around the world to various destinations. We'll be sharing information on ports that we see and activities, etc., on the cruise ship. So if you'd like to join us on our journey, feel free to like and subscribe on the buttons below and follow us as we travel around the world. So our tips um, for a successful cruise trip in Europe are starting with mine is um, to wear really comfortable shoes, walking shoes. So um, the reason for that is that you'll be doing many steps a day. I think we on average did about 13,000 steps a day, if yeah, not more, easy. during the ports of call. So it's just really important. You know, you don't want blisters, you don't want sore feet. So definitely comfortable shoes. Yep. And just from the point of view, even a lot of the cobblestones are very slippery. So yeah. you want to have good grip on the bottom of it. Um, make sure you wear them a fair bit before you go away so you're not going to have new shoes that, that might not feel as comfortable as nicely broken in ones. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, you're always getting a little bit of rain, slippery surfaces and all that. So just make sure you've got really reliable shoes. It's really important. Yeah, thinking like Santorini and those, you know, Climbing up, oh, climbing up hills. those stairs. Yeah, <laughs> how highly polished they are and slippery. Well, with Santorini, you've got other things besides water. You've got <laughs> a lot of donkeys, <laughs> doo doos everywhere that you might want to clean off later on. But anyway, that'll be another video coming up. Okay, so that was my tip about um, comfortable shoes. Yeah, I probably like to mention about bank mm. uh, ATM um, and your debit and how to how to use your money over there. Um, do your research before you go over and try and get a. Probably a, a debit card is probably the most reliable thing rather than having a credit card for your, your daily spend if you want to do some cash. We, do, we just take a, a, a debit card, which is from an institution in our country that has uh, zero ATM withdrawal fees so that we can go and draw money out. Um, also have the ability to um, Google Pay or in some cases Apple Pay. Mm. Um, we normally draw out a little, enough money to have a couple of days um, spending money on us um, and always just ensure that that the um, there's always something that you can have just in case those Google Pay and all that, which is very common nowadays, but if they don't work, you just want to have some cash on you. The other in interesting thing is if you do use Google Pay or any of those things in a restaurant or, or uh, a shop, they'll always come up with um, a merchant fee, which when you go into the machine, it'll ask whether you want to... Um, actually change into the current rate of the country mm. via the merchant or you want your bank to do it. Always go option B and use your own bank to do the conversions because they'll be at international conversion rates which big banks will follow and are usually fairly competitive. But if you go with a merchant side of it, they can charge virtually anything they want and they're usually pretty steep. So just always err on using your bank's exchange rate and not the merchant rate. Yeah, good idea. That's yeah, good, very good tip. Is that the same at the ATM when you're withdrawing the cash out? No, generally it's just a straight um, withdrawal from okay. your account, so it doesn't really um, come into play there. Yep. Well, I have another tip, which is to make sure that you have small change when going to the toilet. So, for example, you know, have like one euro coins because many of the toilets will... Um, or public toilets, they do charge you to use them. So that's something, you know, just have some euros handy. And the other thing I'd like to add to that is also just, you know, have a packet of tissues or something like that on hand as well because you may find that you, they have, may have run out of toilet paper or it isn't supplied. So I think, you know, they're two really good tips to yeah. make sure that you know about. Yeah. yeah. I mean, paying seems weird or strange to a lot of um, people from different countries but um, paying a little bit is usually a good thing because those toilets are usually maintained yeah that's someone's true. cleaning them someone's looking after them that's true you're paying uh, but you're going to get a, a better product <laughs> yeah. yeah um probably the next thing just personal safety and, and taking your belongings um, we use a, a cross body bag i take personally um, 
on most of our trips. And I've actually got an example of ours for mine here, which is like this. It obviously sits in front, sits in front of the body. Um, got several pockets. It's even got a, a pocket on the back, which mm. when it slips in, it stays mm. hugs up against the body. Mm. Um, and you can put your money wallet in the back. I if I normally take, I never try and take passports, especially if you're going off the ship. Best best you can do is just take a photocopy of a passport. Never been asked. So um, unless it's made perfectly clear that you must have a passport, just don't do it. Just take a copy. Put it in the back there maybe put a larger sum of your money if you're taking some money and your personal credit cards and keep it in that pocket at the back that's got several pockets at the front i usually have one for my phone i don't leave anything in my pants pocket um, it's just too easy for them to to steal out of um, we've actually witnessed a case on one of our cruises mm. where a gentleman lost thousands of dollars yeah on the rialto mm. bridge in venice in what? venice um, yeah. i'm not sure why he would be carrying thousands of dollars mm. but he did mm. and um uh, so you've just got to be really careful. Um, I always then leave in the front pocket. It's got a little front pocket. Keep small amount of um, loose change, small bits of money. I mean, let's face it. If you got in a situation overseas where you are going to be robbed, I always think whatever I've got handy on me, whether whatever I can pull out, hand over some money, whether it's small or whatever, just give them what they want. So I think the key is not to carry anything... Th that you really don't want to lose because you never know what's going to happen. Mm. So just minimise the amount of risk. Um, take that basic debit card just to get some money out of an ATM, but don't take your big ten thousand dollar, twenty thousand dollar credit card. You know you don't need to. Just keep keep something small and just think along the lines. If that was stolen off to me today because someone threatened my, my, my wife or me, that I could move on tomorrow and keep going. Uh, and, and not have to worry about it too much. So these are really good. Uh, I mean, this is just my number one companion when I go overseas, any country, whether it's high risk, low risk, uh, Asia, which I find is very low risk for anyone pickpocketing you at all, but it's just handy. It just, you've got the products that you want, your phone, tissues, anything like that right in front of you where you can see them, where you can feel them, and no one can get hold of them. So they're really good. I really recommend that. And um, it's my number one thing when I travel. First mm. thing I put in the back mm. in a suitcase. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so my next tip would be on your phone, know how to use Google Translate. Mm. Um, we found that really particularly helpful. There was a situation where we needed to go to a chemist or a pharmacy to get some medication and we went in and there was a bit of language, you know, communication yeah barriers there so what we did was we pulled out google translate on our phone and then what i would do would be uh, you can actually either enter the text or you can you know do an audio and i would say what we were looking for it would then translate that into the particular language and then the person would be able to read that and then talk back to me and it would do the same and that's how we navigated this particular situation in a pharmacy where we needed medication and we were both able to understand each other pretty clearly on what we wanted so i just think i need medical think google translate is amazing and we've used it on other travels as well haven't oh, we you know in other situations sure. throughout petrol, many countries petrol many. stations is another good one yeah in france <laughs> um yeah, even trying to order a coffee sometimes is it can be handy. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so that's mine. Yeah, I probably think another tip that's probably worth noting, um, and you can get caught out on it, especially on holidays, you lose track of days and <laughs> weekends and all that. It's just keep a calendar, make some notes about when public holidays are in particular port or country you've arrived in. Um, it's it just surprising how many times you you can turn up on a weekend, a Saturday, Sunday or a public holiday and and things aren't operating the same mm -hmm. as they would in your country on a weekend. Mm -hmm. um, things can completely shut down in some countries, especially Italy and Greece and all the rest of it. Uh, you know, your, your Google uh, calendar or, or whatever device you use for your calendar in your phone and just make sure you track those days and maybe mark them down before you leave so that you can quickly reference them, you know, a day or two before you get there and at least know that, you know, there could be restricted trains, transport 
or whatever mm. and it obviously affects the traffic as well mm. in where you're traveling to for the day in your port and how long it's going to take you to mm. get there and get back so um it's just just always always be aware of weekends and public holidays because they do come into play a fair bit mm. i think two examples of that that we can explain just to give you an, um, an idea was when we went to athens so the port day that we went to athens what they did was they allowed all the public to go to all the sites so for free remember yeah. and there was just huge lineup so getting tickets was very difficult and um, even getting into the city was a bit more difficult i know some people were doing ways like the um, hop on hop off bus and they had trouble getting to some of the the sites because it was just so crowded so that's one thing to be aware of and the other one I was thinking about was in Rome so the day that we um, had that port stop in Rome there was um, a big biking event on and um, it was very difficult once again some of the streets were shut off and so forth so it is a good tip to check out and research what public holidays are on and what events are on because you know that could impact upon what your plans are mm. yeah, yeah. Um, the other thing is that can be really hot so obviously take sunscreen take a hat um, make sure that you have water and you stay hydrated you know the temperatures can soar and um, it's really important to make sure that yeah you look after yourself in that regard yeah do you have anything to add to that no, I'm just big on sunscreen. So, yeah, pale skin, us European descent, exactly. You can get burnt very quickly. Quickly, you can. Yeah, yeah. Okay. The other thing, probably, it's not so much a tip. Maybe just some some ideas or, or some a mindset is is you got to be flexible on your cruise and your port days. Mm. Um, just remember that ports get cancelled all the time due to weather, due to change of conditions. We've had ports being removed purely because Someone's been sick on the boat, had to be airlifted, and the boat had to slow down. Helicopter came on to take them off. The boat lost five or six hours of travel time due to that, and and therefore we, we missed the port. Mm. So, you know, and, and weather's another one that, that always pays into that. So just be flexible. Don't it, It's going to happen, and just don't get too worried about it. Um, you, don't, you don't want it to wreck your holiday just because you missed a port. Mm. It is part of cruising and just be aware of it and, and don't worry too much about it. Yeah, I'm going to miss two ports in Italy due to weather yeah. generally. A lot of people get worked up and I don't mm. think you should. Mm. I think you just got to have an understanding it can happen. Mm. And we weren't able to get into Kotor either. Yeah. Something to do with the tenders and it was too windy. So, yeah, yeah unfortunately, but as you say, these things happen. Well, sometimes they can play into your hands. I think mm. one of the cruises we missed one port um and we were due to only have two days in venice and we got three so yeah, i remember that was a nice cruise and yeah, it was nice was... to spend <laughs> spend that extra time in in that particular city yeah, so it can true. it can work out well yeah, sometimes yeah exactly um the other thing is i'm um, talking about different ports and everything another really good tip is on the ship they will have destination specialists and talks and i always think they're really handy to attend because you can pick some tips up about the ports that you may not have been aware of so that's a number another tip for me is if you see them you can watch it on your tv in your room or you can go and you know sit in the theater so but they are interesting and you just might pick something up along the way that you weren't aware of yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i suppose yeah. another tip along the same lines would be before you go to Facebook um, groups that would be mm. pertaining to your type of your cruise that you're going on there. They're so common to happen nowadays, uh, mm. easily, usually pretty easily to find on mm. Facebook. And uh, you've got your cruise critic as well, where you've got your roll calls yeah. um, that you can log into there and, and see what's happening before you go on and people talk to other travellers that are on your trip and find out what they're up to and some of their tips. But there's plenty of ideas that can come out of that. So that's another good thing. Absolutely. Well, that comes to the end of our 10 tips for, you know, cru when cruising and travelling in Europe. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, we hope that we've given you some, you know, tips that you may not have thought about or may not have known about. And um, we'll be doing some videos next on ports of call such as Santorini, um, Barcelona. So we've got lots of videos coming up. So feel free to subscribe and follow us and we'll talk to you soon. Cheers. Yeah.